This week's episode of the Electric Samba Project, we head down to Irwindale for another BW show. So this weekend, there was another drag day at the Irwindale Speedway. These are always good shows as the turnout is great. Over 2,500 spectators and tons of cars, vendors, swap meet sellers, and of course, the races. It's 30 miles away, so the old Samba needs a bit of a charge to be able to make it back home. The cool thing is that there is a big RV station with a bunch of NEMA 1450 plugs, so it's EV heaven for me. This show was bigger than ever for some reason. So it was non-stop for those of us around the Samba. People are just blown away to hear that going electric is even possible. And then to see it done on a 57 year old car is just beyond cool for most people. For me, it's really fun talking to all of those interested, but it gets intense sometimes. You get all the main questions back to back. How far? How fast? How much? And most of those questions are easy enough to answer. But there are some questions that keep coming up that take a little bit of work to explain. Sometimes a simple yes or no won't do it. So today I thought I would tackle a couple of these questions that all EV owners frequently get. First question, why not use solar panels? Yes, why not use solar panels? They are great, they produce free electricity from the sun. University teams around the world raise solar electric cars every year. So why not use solar panels? So the short answer is yes, solar panels can be used. They can be installed somehow. They would charge the battery. But the question we should be answering is, is it practical? Well, let's take a look. My Samba's roof is roughly 54 inches wide by 144 long. So we chose a high efficiency panel like, let's say the one that EVTV sells, you could fit about four and a half of those panels in the entire roof of the Samba. Each one of those panels puts out 180 watts of energy times 4.5 panels, that equals to around 810 watts. Southern California receives an average of five and a half hours of sunlight every day of the year. So the panels could generate a total of 4.45 kilowatts per day. My Samba, on an average, uses about 400 watts per mile. So the solar panels would provide enough power for 11 point one miles of range not bad right now let's look at the price the panels alone would cost uh, around thirteen hundred and fifty dollars plus say another five hundred for hardware wiring and then there's still electronics to control the energy produced by the system so let's just say roughly and realistically around two thousand dollars for the same $2,000 at current prices, you could also just buy 7 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate cells that will give you roughly twice the range of the solar panels. So it's possible, but not very practical. Installing 4.5 solar panels on a vehicle would probably be so challenging of a job that not many would even attempt such adventure. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to catch next week's episode for more electric samba adventures. Until next week, bye. It's been a wild journey. My name's Chip Yates and I'm an extreme electric vehicle innovator, designer, pilot, motorcycle racer. And we've been out in the desert and we've been killing it in this electric airplane that I am leaning against right now. Electric motors are the future. And over the last couple days, we've been out here with Red, and we've been just owning world records. What does it take to make a world record? It takes the best of the pilot, the skill, the technology, the aircraft, 
the time, the weather, the location, everything has to come together. Teaming up with RED when you're pushing technology is the way to go. We're independent guys, we're, we're out there, we're setting a little bit of a revolution, and we believe in a future where you don't have to take what people hand you. This plane is flying 220 to 230 miles an hour. We're doing rapid spins, we're doing aerobatic maneuvers, we're literally doing barrel rolls, flying upside down, climbing up to 15,000 feet. So we have come back with absolutely epic footage off the red cameras that has been completely inspirational. We're able to stop it. We're actually able to slow it down so much that we can see technical problems. We can see wing flutter, we can see small oil leaks. I want people to come by and say, this thing smells like America. This thing reeks of being American. This is like a couple unfunded dudes coming together on weekends, building something as a, as a point of inspiration maybe, as a, an example of what's possible if you drive hard, if you push technology. Looking at what we've done with very few resources and just a lot of heart, I want people to look at that and say, is there a way we can get back to where everybody was building stuff, everyone was innovating? This is a company that stands for innovation. Red's a company that stands for innovation. And technology's here to stay. It, it's, it's up to each of us to literally wake up in the morning and say, what can we do? How can we do our part to build something that defines the future? lost our wheel right here folks if you enjoy my videos don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment uh, if you don't then also leave me a comment so i can make these videos better thank you <laughs>